Hey guys, this video is um, part of week two of IT485 and IT386 game modeling and texturing. Uh, based on um, the conversations I've had with the Wasteland 2 team over the last couple days, it seems like they're really excited um, and they want to get us involved with modeling and texturing their assets. Um, and they can, they said that we can work around um, the deadlines and uh, requirements based on, you know, us being a, a student team and you having other classes to work on. So the uh, the deadlines that are posted on their, their website aren't going to really apply to us. Um, so I'd like to um, switch this class just a little bit. I'm going to tweak it. This week I was going to make a video on um, how to uh, create the concept artwork for just a generic door basically and then you guys are going to make like a you know one for a door and a piece of furniture and a small item in your room and then find all the reference artwork you know and create the concept art for that. Um, and then we were going to get more in depth into actual real deal texturing in Photoshop actually like creating your own textures. But there's the first step is grabbing textures from like a website like cgtextures.com and actually building your textures from actually photos and then maybe applying some additional effects that you create by hand um, like the grunge blood or ink um, or scratches as such even though you could create like a metal and then like say this splatter here like this white you could alpha out and it would look like blood is splattered and then you wouldn't you would just from photos you're creating mostly your your textures um, so that's the route we're gonna take right now um, I'm, I just want to get you up and running and let's get as prepared as possible for when we actually start working with Wasteland 2 team uh, and that means let's just focus on photo textures texturing within Photoshop using photo references and then maybe some additional effects that you build on top of it but not the whole full gambit of um, you know building textures from scratch in Photoshop but again these those videos are available um, from canned mushrooms and um, we will talk about it a bit for those who are actually very interested in in doing the full texturing workflow but at least I'm going to get everyone up and running with just grabbing photos, references from cgtextures.com, or how to hunt and find textures online to use, just to get you guys up and running so that we can actually start producing stuff for Wasteland 2. And then those who actually really are interested, you know, I'll, I'll make resources available to them to continue their education. Um, <clears throat> and obviously those that that type of new texturing workflows you're learning can also be applied toward Wasteland 2 in this class and future classes. Um, but I would like to just get everyone up and running as quickly as possible. So that being said, we're still going to do the door concept for this week. It's just going to be um, a blast door from um, batch 2 uh, from the Unity site. So if you go on to the Moodle page and you go to the WIP forum, um, there will be some 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 uh, posts about the Wasteland stuff. So if we click here on Wasteland 2 first batch practice assignment, I actually saved out um, all their their posts from this batch. So <clears throat> you know they needed a bicycle rack, beat the shit. Um, you know, here's the try count for the bike rack and for the bike. Uh, dilapidated car, um, electronics, machinery. Here's some more, and the blast door, which I'll be focusing on here. And then you know, lab equipment, random rocks, shanty shack, radio towers, train cars, and so on. The other awesome thing is that you can um, work on these assets I was just showing you um, in this previous um, art batch that Wasteland 2 wanted. If you go on the Wasteland 2 website, go on the forum here, and go down to Crowdsource Unity Assets, um, here you can um, take a look. Actually, you'll, you'll see that people will throw up um, uh, whips of projects they've worked on but it might be a little too late um, to meet that batch but they'll still post it up on the forum and get feedback or even during the batch they'll throw it up and get a lot of feedback so it's good like this was from the drone the drone 
um, session. It's good to see what other guys are doing. Get a good idea. Um, but if you go down far enough, like for example, here's a blast door. You can start to see what other people were creating. Um, and then feedback from the art team. You know, so here's he's going through the texturing workflow. And here he's, he's getting some feedback from the actual team. So you can do this too. You can post up here um, and actually get some great feedback. Like here's Shanty Shack. You know, see how people, um, what they're thinking, what their, their theme, their, their look and feel is. This guy actually did different levels of detail. That's awesome. And see how their texture maps are laid out. So it's, you're getting a feel for how people are doing it. Um, and, and a feel for how the game world should look for you to develop your own stuff. It is important to take the concept artwork and um, just tweak it a bit. Make it a little bit your own. Don't replicate exactly what's in here. So I'm going to go through that workflow a little bit. So for here, let's focus on the blast door. Um, so these doors are found in facilities and compounds and hold up pretty darn good against a blast or lockpick. Specific dimensions must be adhered to in order to be used in game, blah, blah, blah. So here's the dimensions, two and a half meters high, two and a half wide, 0.125 meters thick. Uh, approximate try count, 2,000 tries are under map size. That means your, your diffuse spec normal maps need to be um, 1024 by 1024 pixels. Um, so these are the two concept artwork they have here. So first you can look at their concepts. First off, they, they, um, the doors seem to have this cut off corner. That seems to be a recurring theme. Um, secondly, there seems to be some type of viewport to see through on the other side and some way for the door to open. Besides that, um, you're pretty much free to do as you want from just that's what I'm getting from these concept artwork you know they're very um they're very um metallic uh very structurally sound sh sharp edges you know very militaristic looking so from this I can create my own little concept artwork that I'd like to start work on my own door to submit to the wasteland forums to get feedback from the team and also to tell them, hey, you know, you can use my asset. Um, and the first step in doing that was I just kind of traced out the door that I kind of wanted to work on. So let me open up next to each other. Um, my artwork is a little different than the concept provided. Um, I just put up in the middle between them. Um, I, 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 I went for the viewing window, uh, a little bit bigger, and, and I tried to keep these sharp angles and what have you. But I went for a very different approach and it actually opens up diagonally. The doors could open left and right, or they could open up and down, and they would open up at this diagonal mark. And actually, this is, um, I just traced uh, this on paper with a pencil and actually when I scanned it in it's um, it scanned in upside down so I actually have to fix that which I'll do in Photoshop but just to know that you can trace out the door on pen and paper or you can scan it in bring it into Photoshop or you can just trace it out right in Photoshop using the drawing tools here so I'll, I'll talk about this some more this is kind of um, I was starting to texture out the door and I'll show you just how I was going about that uh, but first, let me open up the door. All right, so I found my door image. Now, a few things to note here uh, with the concept artwork is, first off, um, I, he got scanned in upside down, so um, you can flip using the um, transform keys, and you notice that um, the transform's kind of blanked out, and that's actually because I'm I'm having this background layer, and it's locked. Um, usually, when a background layer will be locked, 
um, and because usually it's like a reference image or your starting point and, and you're not going to mess with it but you can right click and either say layer from background and you can actually change it into a layer and now this layer is modifiable so I can transform and um, I'm going to flip it vertically and this is correct this is how I want the window um, also really quick everything that you've learned in week two from the canned mushroom videos and from week one with the shading now you should feel very comfortable with the uh, selection tool the lasso tool you know maybe even the magic wand but the brush tool the eraser the fill the uh, dodge and burn a little bit um, and just from these tools is basically oh and also layers and uh, managing layers and using the blending on these layers um, from all that, uh, you should uh, be have all the tools that uh, necessary for using photo references in your in your texturing workflow. So everything I'm talking about here, if you went through those two weeks, um, you should pick up on it. If not, you know, just message in the forums, and I can elaborate on it more. So now that we have the image oriented right side up, what I can do is we could crop a bit because um, you know it's scanned in an eight and a half by eleven um, and that the image isn't that big so I can take the crop tool and just crop it where press the return key and now the image is cropped around what I like. The other thing you notice is he might be a little um, slanted so up here we have these rulers. If you don't see them, that's under view. You have rulers here. Make sure it's clicked on with that check mark. Uh, you can click and drag down. Make sure you're in the selection tool. Um, and you can see here if I drag out some lines that the side looks pretty good. The top looks a little off. And uh, if you try and drag it to the bottom, you see he's like snapping to the bottom because the bottom of the image is so close. I can actually go off and just turn off snap for right now. So I can drag it, the lines out. And I'll drag one here. So the, the bottom you see is off, the top is off, and this side is off a little bit. And then this side is really flat. So I have a little bit of distortion. I could either rotate this image using, I could turn on show transform controls and I could just rotate that image a little bit to flatten him out. Um, or you could use um, these distort or perspective tools to distort the image to make them fit the, um, the guidelines more. So either way, I'll just try distortion since this line was lined up all right. So now you see that the door is lined up on the guidelines, meaning it's a much more square uh, image. So the next is just start laying down photo, photo images on these areas um, to start doing a basic texture of how you think this door would be... Um, looking like and that will help you in, in modeling phase and you know obviously in the texturing phase but um, as you'll see you might actually have to model in more details based on how you want this thing to look so all I did was uh, go to CG textures um, I went in the metals um, and I started looking for like a metal for the door so if we look back on the the Wasteland 2, again, you know, they, um, these uh, military facilities are like underground. They're pretty well kept. Uh, they're pretty well kept. You want some type of military grade metal. Um, and you might want to add some type of rusting effects, but nothing like it's like completely exposed to the environment. Um, so actually I think I went looking at these aircraft panel pieces because I like these riveting effects um, you yeah, know it's very militaristic and very looks very solid uh, so I think I grabbed one of these airplane panels 
I don't think it was a galvanized. Although there is some rivets here. Let's look at my Photoshop image. You see it, it had these, I kind of picked it already had like a little rusting going on it. And um, these rivet effects. So it probably was one of these aircraft images, but um, the big thing to notice here is these, this wording underneath, set tiled huge, set huge, huge. Th that means these images are so large that um, they're actually high res images. So if I click on one, uh, I got to log in first. It's a free account, so you can log in. You can see that you have small, medium, large. You have um, 15 megs available a day. And so you see like the large one is 1.5 meg. So I could probably download 10 of these sizes up, but usually that's big. You know, usually um, I'll do about a medium sized one. So, you know, half a meg. <clears throat> so uh, that's where you can download the metals. And also to be aware of is to, instead of the tiling, also look for Anything that says seamless or tileable, let's see, in Gal see set tiled, those are great because that means it's a repeatable image. That means the left hand side matches up with the right hand side, the top at the bottom. So you can repeat it over and over again and make larger textures from it. Or you can repeat it on your model, you know, in game and it'll look like a seamless image. So be aware looking for tiled and these over here are not tiled. Also tiled, you could tell because it's square, 640 by 640. <clears throat> um, so anyway, I, I found a base metal texture. And then I found this type of glass here. <clears throat> so let's see if I can find it real quick. Maybe backlit. Yeah, so it was either this one or this one. It was one of these very, like, old industrial glasses, windows that has, like, these metal bars. So I picked it because the metal bars looked really reinforcing. <clears throat> and again, this one is, a you know, an actual picture of a, uh, you know, a warehouse. So it's not a repeatable... Uh, pattern. So, you know, I only used it once. Just looking through these really quickly. Yeah, it was from the other section. I grabbed it. So, you see it here. And then, if I shrink this up, and you can see all my layers, everything that's going on. Um, if I hide my glass, you see that I just grabbed an image of a hallway. So basically I have three images. I have a piece of, a picture of a metal that I use over and over again, a picture of a glass, and actually I just kind of took a very light eraser and worked out the windows here so that you actually see through the glass into the image behind it, which happens to be um, this hallway here. So if I disable this layer mask, you see that this is the whole image of this hallway. And you can actually go layer, layer mask, and you can create a layer mask for this, which actually just kind of, it hides everything you don't want. So you see it kind of fits that hallway image in the window. And I did the same thing with the uh, glass. I just rotated it and kind of put a layer mask on it. I mean, you could um, delete it using the poly lasso tool, polygon lasso tool or something. But um, I like the not this because it's non-destructive. So you see I have some files here, a uh, window source. Okay, I can um, turn him over here and you can start to see the opacity low on that layer. This is what I started with. So he was something like this, you know, straight on. So all I did was rotate him, kind of position him where I liked it. Um, press the enter key for the transformation. So I'll turn everything off on. I'll just have him. 
And I lowered the opacity, and the reason I did that is so I can see the outline here. <clears throat> so what you can do, take this polygon lasso tool, and just start drawing out this window shape. And that was um, under this button, you have to hold down the left key and it's the, the middle one here. So now I have this section selected on this layer. I can go layer, layer mask, and actually reveal selection or hide selection. I want to reveal the selection because I selected the interior of the window. And you see it just left this image only in this area. And if you look over to layer mask, black means hide, white means reveal, and you see like a that section corresponds to this door here, this window. So now the glass looks a little light, and that's because my opacity is down. So I can raise him. And I, the reason I just had that opacity down is so I can find the edges he needs to be applied to. Now I, um, I can bring back this image of these people walking in the hallway. I can disable the layer mask. And this is what the, he originally came from. And I just did the same thing, same workflow. I lowered the opacity using the polygon lasso tool. I traced out this window with creating a layer mask with that selection going layer, layer mask, reveal selection. And I can enable that layer mask back. So now I have this hallway and I have this window. So <clears throat> I'm going to want to drag this, you know, also make sure to name your, your layers. I'm, I'm manipulating these layers as I use them right now, but I had them labeled out nicely, so I know what I was messing around with. But the point is I want to drag this hallway underneath the window, right? So I can go up to the window, and there's a few different ways to do this, um, but uh, I think you can, you can do an erase, or you can actually add to this layer mask more um, like you can paint like a mid gray meaning kind of make it semi-transparent um, or you can actually select like a black probably and uh, just do a very low opacity and you can paint is my opacity too low I've been painting on the image. Let me go into history here and work this brush back out. Um, all right, seems like I wasn't painting to the mask. So let me click on the layer itself and you can select the eraser tool. Just do a very soft edged brush, get the hardness down, get that opacity down shrink the brush up and you could just start painting with the brush oh, you know why this isn't working I'm actually let me do the undo the erase tools again because I'm actually working on the um, the hallway that's my mistake I actually have to work on the window so let me try to let me select the black paint brush okay here we go so now I'm painting on the actual layer mask so Make sure I'm on the window. Make sure I click the layer mask. Again, you can just use an eraser on the actual layer, right? That's one workflow. Or you can click on the actual layer mask and click a, a light paint, a light opacity black brush. And you see you can paint the hallway in. Um, basically painting, making the window invisible. And so it looks like you're seeing through, you know, these windows. Um, so I, I just preferred to paint on the layer mask because it's non-destructive. I'm not actually erasing information on this window. It's actually just a layer mask. So if I could actually paint some white back into the layer mask, if I uh, didn't like, you know, the um, how I'm how it's appearing, and you see I'm kind of making a much softer fall off around the edges. So I'm actually just painting white back into the layer wet mask, and and white means, um, again, reveal. So a reveal again 
on the window. So again, that's just how I got to this window to appear like it's see-through and you're looking down a hallway into a military corridor. So next, uh, this was my metal piece that I started with. Oops. Metal source here. Um, and then you saw that uh, I, I kind of just created these horizontal, these, ver these diagonal stripes and up and down. And to do that, let me turn them off. And you can see up here I have a very similar setup. I'm actually using um, a layer mask a little bit. So basically I kind of identified a section of this metal source. So let me duplicate him and hide that old one. I usually I'll say I'll hide my source somewhere in case you got to continue working on it. Uh, but I can uh, move them around, <clears throat> kind of line them up to how this door is working. And if you need to use the arrow keys to get really tight in there. Uh, I'll lower the opacity down on this metal so I can see through it a bit. Let's kind of see what I'm doing. Um, and kind of identifying major areas I'd like to work on. So the diagonal is kind of the hardest, so maybe I'll just do him. So I, I'm just doing strips of the door at a time so that I can do effects just on those strips. Like you see here, I turned this part of the metal green because um, I wanted different parts of my door, different colors. So uh, let's see, I'll line him up, trying to find a place that he looks relatively good at. Uh, you see that the, I want to get these bolts over. If I make them a little more opaque, you can see here's the line. That's the seam that splits the door frame. So I actually want the rivets kind of on that side because this is the other side of the door. So I might actually scale them a bit. So I can get the seams, so I get those seamed um, rivets on this left side of the line um, because this is like a little panel I'm making. So I can move him up a bit and uh, f see he seems lined up nice with the line. And um, now that I think this is good. I think he's lined up right, I think he's the right size. You can actually hold down the Alt key and I can duplicate him and you can move him and you can, this is how you can build out sections. I'm just duplicating the image over and over again. Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, and then you'd actually delete, you know, the areas that you're not using. Um, another way, um, let me, let me show you that real quick because, um, let me use the poly select tool and drag a line up here because actually this area should be deleted because um, we're just working on one section of the door. Um, if you noticed a little section of the door was hanging off the image, just be wary of that because if I move it, it, now you see this down here. So just select him. Delete that for good measure. All right, now we're left with this section of the door. I can move them back. And again, press the uh, Enter key, to make, just to make sure I wasn't in a tool. You can hold down the Alt key and you can build him out, um, and, which I just showed you before. Or the other way is you can use this clone stamping tool. Um, select a, a pretty hard brush for this and 100% opacity, because you're basically duplicating this object. So you hold down the Alt key, and then you see um, I'm actually painting this area out. Let me scroll the brush down a little bit because it's actually painting out the lines that it sees there. Um, so you see as I'm painting, I'm basically painting the door image, this metal image. See, I'm just painting it right up. Capacity, why is it turning red on me? That's interesting. Let me make sure it's, is it the black? No. Interesting. All right, 
That's one issue. Sample current layer. You just want to sample that one layer. Okay. I don't know. For some reason it was uh, getting color information. So I did sample current layer, just whatever the hell I'm working on right now. You know, and you can actually just paint this door. It's actually cloning where if you see as I'm moving, there's like a crosshair in the middle of the screen right now. That's actually where it's referencing the image that I'm actually building out. So that's one, that's the clone stamp way. And then you can you hold down the alt key and just keep duplicating the image. Either that, either way is good. Um, and that's how I kind of built out these frames of the door. And then I would just continue building out these little sections. And so the last thing I really wanted to show you was uh, this little nugget right here, this little um, arched, this is like I built out one of the areas and I laid it so that the rivets are nice going around it. Uh, and I did a, um, a colorization on it. So, okay, right. So if I take you off and let me just take everything off for a second. Basically, this is what the raw image looked like. It was this, um, you know, military gray. There's just, there is like a slight, um, aging going on here but no colorization so basically what I did with this guy is I did um <clears throat> this is the layer of this corner right here and you have these adjustment layers so what I did was I did a a color balance and I took the midtones I basically made them a little blue so I started to make this area a little blue you see as I turn on and off and what this arrow means is this adjustment layer is only affecting this layer that's why the rest of the image isn't getting like this bluish tone. And this is a great way to start adding <clears throat> individual effects to areas. So since this area is a nice hard edged area, I can select a type of adjustment layer. You can add hue and saturation, adjust the brightness contrast. And if you right click on a layer, um, this is where you get the clipping mask. So I can release it. And you see how it's affecting everything that's affecting these two. It's not affecting this outer metal because he's above it. He's up here. But you see that it's affecting the glass too layer because that's below this layer. But again, if I can right click and I say create clipping mask, you get this little arrow icon. He's not affecting this glass anymore. He's just affecting them. And so this is the two metal. Um, and all I did was here's a hue saturation adjustment layer. Again, it's, it's this adjustment layer I picked. And all I did was um, <clears throat> ramp up the saturation and lower and change the hue a little bit. It made, it made, it made um, all the hues drop value of negative 10, which um, for this metal, it made the reds come out. It made them look more rusty. You know, for the glass here, it really made the glass more blue and the metal kind of strike a little bit more. And it made, since this guy became much more greenish bluish because I had this color balance effect going on it. So when you added this hue saturation on top, it really popped out the saturation. And this is being applied to all the layers underneath it. So I, I could, again, right click, go create clipping mask. And it's only going to affect the layer underneath it, which is this part of the door. Um, and you see how he's kind of got that reddish rust going on and nothing else has got that color change. But again, I can right click release clipping mask and now everything is being affected by this adjustment layer, which is messing with the hue and the saturation. And again, I would continue building out the door. And then this would be my concept artwork that I can bring into <clears throat> Maya to start the modeling process. And now I've kind of got my textures figured out when you do something like this, but it's also important to, to see as, oh, maybe I should be adding more modeling, more um, resolution on my models too. Like for example, these ribs of metal <clears throat> that are kind of in this like reinforced window, um, you know, they seem to be um, jutting out, protruding from the glass. So it's not a flat piece of geometry. So to, to deal with that, it might need some, you know, model. This might need some, some extrusions here to really make this metal come out. So just based on my concept artwork, I'll start to figure out, oh, there's some areas of the model that need to be refined more based on what I want to achieve with this concept artwork. So for this week, <clears throat> 
I really want you to try out this making a blast door. And the reason for that is because I just kind of did a walkthrough of how to do it with you. And also Chris is creating videos on the whole modeling process and then the exporting, you know, testing it in the Unity scene and then putting it in the Unity store. And it's all based on this blast door. Um, so, <clears throat> um, we'll talk more in class about this, but um, right now I just like to get working on the Wasteland 2 stuff. So if you've already worked on stuff, you know, finish it up, you know, we can work on it in class too. And then um, try thinking about one of these assets for Unity um, that I have up here. Um, the blast door, again, might be the simplest to work on, but if you, if you want to test out something else, you know, be all, by all means go for it. But if, if you don't know how to proceed with this stuff, then just follow along with the blast door. Thank you.